Got dreams of being a professional podcaster, but have no idea what you're doing? This is impossible. That's about to change. A new kind of school. Welcome to the Pod School Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. Today, how the heck do you get your little voice on other people's podcasts? Getting yourself and your show featured on other podcasts is a really great way to bring new listeners into your show because the easiest people to convert to listening to a podcast are people who do it already. So if you can jump into the ears of a listener who already understands podcasting, is already a fan of a show, and you can sit down with somebody who has a show that's in your niche or has an audience that you think might also be really interested in the content that you do, then it can be a really powerful way to get new ears onto your show. However, you have to go about it the right way. So how do you get yourself on other people's show without being annoying? The very first piece of advice I'm going to give you is for the love of all things holy, listen to their show. I have been pitched a number of times, both personally and also when I was running the Mamma Mia podcast network. And the pitches that I would get sometimes, I would think, oh, this is pretty obvious that you haven't listened to a single episode of any show you're talking about because they don't understand the audience, they don't understand the content that you do, and really what it feels like to be on the receiving end of something like that is a message from somebody saying, hey, I'm just looking for new listeners. Could you put me on your show so that I could get some? And that's never the way you want to come across if you want somebody to actually want you on board. When I say listen to their show, I don't mean just 15 minutes. I mean, really have a listen to multiple episodes, get across the vibe of their show, get across the content that they do that clearly works for their audience so that when you're trying to put together your pitch, it can be based around a real understanding of what they do every single episode on their show. You are much more likely for a host to read your email and think, wow, yes, I've got to get this person on if it's very clear that you understand their content and also their audience. The only way you can do that is by actually listening to what they're shipping out every week. So make sure you get your ears across a decent chunk of their show because you want them to know that you have really done your research and you understand that the pitch you are providing is perfectly tailored for their audience because you know who that is. If you can get this right, it's a real no-brainer to say yes to a pitch that appeals to somebody's audience because as we all know, the content beast is hungry. So if somebody turns up in your inbox with an idea that perfectly suits your audience, that is one less episode you have to think about. So if you can make it really simple for someone and you can tell them exactly what value you are going to bring, exactly why your audience is really going to enjoy what you have to say, then for somebody that can be a real few moment because all of a sudden they've got one less thing to do on the to-do list. The next piece of advice is to send a pitch that is compelling and also short. You do not want to send a press release or anything that is written in the style of a press release because that is boring and nobody is going to read that. You want your personality to really spring off the page. You want somebody that you're writing to to go, oh gosh, this person sounds like a great person to work with. This is going to be a really fun chat. You want them to be able to feel engaged and interested in you as a person in your written word so that they have more interest in getting you in and sitting down and speaking to you. You want to make sure that you can really get to the point really quickly because nobody is going to read an email that's nine pages long. So in the opening paragraph, the person on the receiving end of your email should be super clear on what your idea is, what you're bringing to the table, why you're going to add value, how you understand the audience that you've listened to the show. All of that should be really, really clear. And it should be very obvious to somebody reading the email what your idea is, what kind of content you're going to bring and why it could be valuable for their audience. Basically, when somebody reads your email, they've got to think, gosh, this person has really thought about how they could help my audience out and help out my show, not gosh, this person really wants promotion. And that's what a lot of the emails that I have seen come into my inbox sound and look like. And that is the first way to make somebody who has busted their butt to grow their audience and is really protective of it to think, hang on a minute, this feels like I'm being used. And that's not great. So you want to make sure that you are providing value and that you get to the point nice and quick because nobody has time to read nine page emails. Speaking of that, oh, the other thing you shouldn't do, please, if you're going to pitch something, just just pitch it in the first email. Don't send an email that says, hey, I've got a really great idea for you. Let me know if you want to hear it. 
oh, kill me. If it was so great, you could have said it in the first email and you wouldn't have to then make me do the legwork of chasing you up for content I didn't even ask for. So just if you're going to pitch something, if you've done your work behind the scenes, you've listened to the show, you know you've got a killer idea that fits their audience, pack that punch in the very first email. If you start to kind of back and forth, you don't want somebody to feel like they're having to do more work to get this pitch out of you when they didn't even ask you to provide it. So just throw that information up first up and then just follow up with an email, but don't chase them up. It is entirely up to a podcast host whether or not they decide to use you on their show. If the answer is no, some people actually aren't very comfortable with saying no. So they'll often be quiet. And then if you send a little reminder email and you haven't heard back from them, assume that they've got it and they just don't know how to let you down gently. It's fine to just send a hey checking in to make sure that you got this because everybody's inboxes get absolutely swamped. So it's nice to pop that up the top again and just say, just making sure that this came through. But after that, just leave it because as soon as you start to get four or five emails deep into the old haven't heard back from you territory, next thing you know, you've basically induced a panic attack in the person who didn't ask for your pitch in the first place and now doesn't know how to let you down gently, but they're in too deep to say nothing. So just make sure that your pitch is really compelling, hard to say no to, written in a really comfortable, relaxed, engaging style, and then do a quick follow-up. And if they don't say yes or no, then leave it at that. The last piece of advice I'd say is to really think about who you're choosing to send these emails to. Don't just pick a big show or a big network or a big host because you just think, I just want to get in front of as many people as possible. Honestly, appealing to smaller, more engaged audiences is often a way more effective approach. And also the hosts of those shows are often going to be much more open to the idea of bringing other people on who are in a similar position to what they are. Some of the bigger shows, bigger network shows, the number of pitches they have coming in daily, yours has got to really stand out from the crowd. And you also probably have to have a decent profile or at least a very, very compelling pitch. So finding other shows in your niche can be a much better way to do it. And also you can repay the favor by having them on your show as well and doing a bit of a swap so that your audience gets something really valuable out of it as well. And then there's a mutual exchange and you've also made a new pal in the podcasting space. Hope that's helped you think a little bit about how to pitch yourself to other podcasts in a way that makes them say, yes, please, not please go away, which is never a good thing. If you'd like a little bit more help with your podcast, please check out my online podcasting course, PodSchool. You can find all of the details at podschool.com.au. It is a step-by-step, super comprehensive best practice guide to how to start your podcast right from the very beginning of coming up with an idea all the way through to monetizing your show if that's what you would like to do. And of course, if you are enjoying this podcast, please share it with a friend or leave a little five-star review if you're listening in Apple Podcasts. I'll see you next week. And until then, happy podcasting. That's all for today. 